Alrighty. So today I'm going to quickly go over the international that I have. There's some of the info. The model. 4300 SBA 4x2. And there's some of the other info. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this phone. I've been using this truck for work for the past six months. And I'm gonna go over the pros, cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the okay. Well, first off right now, this truck's good for towing, not towing, I mean uh, carrying. As you can see, I got some dial foam. Um, it can hold a lot of stuff. 13 feet mass is probably the highest I'd go on this thing. It's 20 foot, 28 foot long bed with a lift gate that works. This is a diesel, obviously. We are currently renting this truck from Penske. The truck has 73,322 miles on it. We got this about 60, so I've put about 16,000 miles on this truck in maybe six months. Um, and here, let me step down. Show you the interior. So it's got an okay interior. Um, the seat, it's air. Driver's seat needs to be fixed. This thing, not fixed, but replaced. This seat is not good. Oh. Sorry, someone got by. The seat is not comfortable, especially for long drives. It's fine for probably, you know, an hour, two hour, three hours. But when you, when I take trips to New Jersey, you know, two day trips, my back is killing me with this thing. Those seats are comfortable. Those are fine. A lot more comfortable than the driver's seat. Ironic. Um, another thing that I'm going to have to complain about in this truck that I don't like is the radio. The radio is okay. Uh, the Bluetooth, I can't figure out how to get the Bluetooth to, to work. But my biggest gripe with this truck, as I stated in the Ford... The Ford F550, which is obviously not the same truck. This is def this is completely different. But the speakers in the 550 were amazing. The speakers in this, horrible. I hate these speakers to the point where I use earbuds. Uh, for the most part, I use earbuds probably half my day. I only take them out to charge them up. Um, the AC in this truck, uh, it's okay. It's not great. The heat is hot. The heat's real hot, so if you're the type of guy that likes to have hot when they're driving, then you'll you'll like this. Um, something I found out the other day was this right here. That's starting to come out. And if you're like me, I use a GPS every single day. My GPS is right there. I use a GPS every single day. So this already breaking at 77,000 miles is not good news. It's not good news, so I'm probably going to have to take that out of commission. Let's do that now. Um, which is not good. The same thing happened in the 550. Man, on these commercial trucks, these manufacturers really need to get those plugs sturdy, man. It's, I think I even talked about it then. They, those plugs are the lifeline of the driver. I get calls every day, all day on the road. I am having my GPS plugged in. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, I got, I, I need my phone to be charged. My phone, as you can see, it charges all day. My phone charges every single day. It just sits right here, right next to my tape and my water bottle and drill. It just sits right here and it buzzes. I grab it and I, you know what I'm saying? Um, visibility, visibility is big in this truck. You can see everything. I sit kind of lower. I'm a, I like to sit pretty low. Um, it, I, 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 try to treat it more like a pickup truck when I'm driving this thing but you know some guys like to sit way up here and you can see everything I kind of sit a little bit further down 
Uh, mirrors. These are the mirrors. It's basically what I see when I'm driving. I see more. So, yeah. Basically, that's basically what it looks like. Uh, these fishbowl mirrors are killer. These are way better than the 550 mirrors. Uh, I love these mirrors. That's the other side. So, visibility's... I give visibility a pretty good rating on this truck. Um, and when driving, especially if you're looking at that, it does not look that long. But this is, I believe, a 36-foot bed. I mean, a 36-foot long total. Um, so I, I try to keep in, like, 38. And when I have extension, I usually don't go higher than 40. Because uh, I like to be sure, especially when these with these big trucks, and especially where it's a rental or a lease, I try to keep it so that, um, I, I can always fit uh, Downside on this truck Oh gas mileage You do not get good gas in these things I had three quarters of a tank Man Three quarters man And I fill it up for tomorrow $77 That is a lot of money Wow Yep Yeah, that's that's what you expect. Gauges. Let's go over gauges. You got your DEF. Here, let's start the truck up. Let's take a look at what it sounds like from the interior. You hear everything starting to turn on. All right. So it turns. Those are what your gauges look like. Pump's going to go up. Uh, in the morning, don't be alarmed. The battery voltage always stays at 12, and then it shoots back up after a few. Yeah, uh, the most important gauges are definitely these brakes. These brake gauges, you always want to make sure those are working. I, I would not suggest driving without those. both of those at 100%. Uh, lights on. So it looks like at nighttime, off, on, off, on, off. Pretty simple, pretty simple switch. Headlights, running lights, off. Uh, lift gate, you can operate right here. Up and down, up and down. Uh, something that I do like on this truck that they have is disable sixth gear. And I'm gonna talk about that right now. Man, is this thing a slouch. Oh my God, is this thing a slouch. Um, we're located in Massachusetts. A uh, good hour from Boston. When I go up to Vermont, up there, if you've never driven up in Vermont, it's very hill, hilly. There's a lot of hills, a lot of winds, uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill. This thing does not do good on the hills. And there's a reason. Penske put in a, either a governor, a, no, they put in a governor, and I'm not sure if that governor includes a rev limiter or if they also installed a rev limiter, but they have both, because watch. is out right there that's as high as I can get it um, it runs a little higher when you're driving when you're in gear but it doesn't let me rev it up um, yeah so this disable sixth gear is huge uh, you flick that and you're good to go um, yeah like I was saying about Vermont when I'm up in Vermont man it's I get on those hills I remember the last time I went was the well, the last time I went I was driving, I was going like 65, because I can only have a top speed of 70, 70 in this truck, and it goes up to 85, which I, I get that, so it, it, that makes sense. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to harp the, uh, the owner and the, uh, the, you know, the, the project managers and everything about getting the governor and rev limiter taken out of these trucks when we do purchase our own, because I do believe that they are purchasing their own vehicle, and I will do a review on that one too. Um, I believe it's the same exact one, just no lift gate. So I'll take a video on that. Um, but man, yeah, okay, Vermont, uphill. There was a point in time for like an hour and a half, I was going like 35 miles an hour with, and I did not know about this sixth gear disable. I did not know about that. I had no idea that that was even a thing. So I'm in sixth gear engaged, and I am in sixth gear, 35 miles an hour. You going straight sixth gear 35 miles an hour you it, it is going to take five minutes for you to 
pick up speed to go up to 50. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's going to take a long time. Obviously, five minutes is a joke, but up, imagine uphill. You are, you're going up. You know, it, it, it's, a, it, it's a lot of strain on that gear, and this thing does not like to downshift. It does not like to downshift. So you got to kind of downshift. You got to kind of just kind of keep your hand here, and then when you're driving, just... I use this thing constantly now. Every day. Every day. Uh, heat works great. You know, you got all your options. Pretty powerful fan. AC. Pretty powerful fan. Everything still works. 80,000 miles. Um, wipers. Wipers are a big deal. Shoots out a lot of fluid. One gallon tank. Pretty good. Um, I like how this kind of curves a little bit, but I wish that this wasn't here because that's a big visibility problem for me. You know, when I'm driving, I'm looking, now that's a visibility. If I'm in Boston, the car cuts this way and I don't see, you know, I'm kind of going like this. And I'm going, and then I gotta slam my brakes because the car kind of cuts out, you know what I'm saying? It's, that, that's a visibility problem. I think that they should have put a bar or something going across and get rid of this. That's, that's, that's not safe. I don't like that at all. And that one too. It's that, that's not safe. That's not safe. And uh, another thing I don't understand is this. I get it. I use these. I'm not saying I don't drive and you don't want a ton of air. You just want a little bit. But what's the what's the point? Why can't I just go kind of go like that? Well, you know what I'm saying. Why make it simple? I mean, why make it complicated? Get rid of this. Get rid of this whole mess. Level this out and make it one roll down window. Or just you know what I'm saying. Why? Why put this now blocking my visibility? Why Why make this now? Now this has to pair with that, and why make it more complicated than it needs to be? That's I, that's not, I don't understand. And I use these. I was using them today because it was like 70 outside, and I'm wearing a long sleeves Caterpillar hoodie. These things get hot. You know, I'm using that, and I also had this rolled down, you know? So it's, it's yeah. Uh, DEF-wise, talk about DEF for a minute. Um, I filled that tank up, I don't know, a week ago. So I'd say if you do a uh, medium amount of driving, I'd say I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm about medium. I'm not constant highway. I'm not 4,000 miles a week. Uh, but I do it, I, I probably do about 1,500 miles a week, I'd say, if I'm doing a long trip. But I would, um, yeah, it's okay on DEF. I'm not sure how much it holds. I'm not sure what the tank is, but it's it's okay. I hate DEF to begin with. It's just obnoxious. It's annoying. All these things have buzzers, so they'll start beeping on you uh, if you get low. Uh, cruise control. I found out about cruise control when I was driving to Pennsylvania one time. I didn't. I never used it in this truck. I was kind of hesitant to because I just didn't want to mess up the transmission. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's use it. Trans cruise control, fantastic. Um, because these seats, like I said, aren't comfortable, and if you're not in a comfortable position, this lip going down will kind of hurt right here. If you're holding your foot to the gas, it kind of hurts. So it's nice to just kind of be able to sit like that for an hour. You know, if you're going straight, nighttime, and you don't really have to worry about much, you can kind of just, you know, steer. That's that's nice. I like that feature. I like having cruise control in these trucks. Um, okay, let's take uh, let's take a look at the engine. Oh, start off the screen. This truck has a diesel Cummings engine. A diesel Cummings engine. Yes, fantastic engines. These engines can put out a lot of power, baby. These things can put a lot of power. These are good, solid engines. You know, Ram uses them. I think. Uh, I think even. I think Chevy's talking about possibly using some of those engines in some of their uh, 2500s now. Yeah. I'm not sure though, I could be wrong. thought I heard that somewhere. But I know Dodge uses these uh, these Hemi engines. Uh, no, yeah, they use Hemis too, but these diesel Cummings engines, these these are good engines. Um, they, they can last a long time if you take care of them. But let's take a look. Uh, I think it's a 55 gallon drum too, right here. Pop that bad boy open. Listen to that. Mommy 
Mine's engine. Pop that open. And then kind of just lift. That's pretty easy. Pretty easy to work. Big ass front door. There we go. Look at that engine. And man, you can feel that wind blowing. Oh my god. Let's hop up here real quick. Big engine. I like the red too. The red's cool. Man, we can look at that. That's a solid engine right there. That's a solid piece. I wish I had like a uh, cloth or something. Let's show you guys that wind. Let's take this whole newspaper. Outside. Look at that wind. That's not even in all the wind. That, that, that thing puts out a lot of air. Let's take a walk around. Bad. Hey, I'm gonna rev it up for you guys. Oh, I'm nervous. Just like the Ford video, I'm nervous. You know what? We're gonna put you guys right here. That's a big old engine, man. That was loud, especially from where I am. This makes a huge difference in sound. Absolutely does it make a huge difference. I love that red, though. I always have a thing for red. Until it breaks, right? Oh, you hear that? It's that certified clean idle. This thing is certified clean idle. I can show you that badge in a second. Help save on fuel, fuel consumption. Right there, right the two badges. Look at that. Let's get a wide shot. Of what this truck looks like. It's a lot of truck. Look at that. that. That look at that drive shaft. That is a I like big drive shafts. I think that they look cool. And that huge differential. That differential is massive. That's crazy. Uh, let's get another look at that. That's a big ass differential. Look at this. Solid frame. No rust. We're up in New England. Salt on the roads. And and this might sound weird. This might sound weird. But this deck. This deck. I've I've loaded some flimsy decks. I've loaded, you know, some just some just typical decks. But for some reason this seems a lot more structurally sound. It seems a lot more sturdy. I put screws in this, as you can tell. 
you know, just along, I got two, four, six, eight screws right here. I got more on the other side. I put, I probably put a hundred screw holes a day in this thing. I, I am constantly just drilling things into it, you know? What do I care? It's a rental. <laughs> uh, complaint, storage. That's all I got. That's all I got. I ran into this problem. I went, I was in uh, Man, uh, Boston and I had to go to New Hampshire and I needed more straps and I didn't have enough straps. I had a ton of stuff I was bringing. Didn't have enough straps. Now I'm at the problem where I had to strap things improperly and I had some things fall. Fall, not off the truck, but they kind of slipped and it'd be like kind of like this kind of going this way a little bit. Some of these pieces would have fallen out. It didn't, it wasn't proper. And um, I, I was not happy. One of our other drivers had taken straps out without letting me know. I didn't know that. Yes, it should have been part of my check, but I kind of assumed that I was the only one that took the straps. And I was the only one that was driving this truck really to begin with. So we did have a problem with that. But other than that, I mean, this thing, real solid. Thick, thick gauge steel holding this thing in. It's awesome. I love this truck. Oh, let's show the lights. So like I said before, we got running lights. Just these. And up top. And you got headlights. We'll turn headlights on. One, two, three. The back end. Boom. Now, if I didn't have these doors on here, and it wasn't going to be a problem, because it's going to kind of open up a little bit, you know, it'd be a problem. I would, I would do the lift gate. I'd show you, but I don't feel like possibly screwing up these doors. These doors are expensive. I don't want to mess with them. Uh, but yeah. Oh, oh, another thing I like. I, I call this truck the Shin Buster because you, you put your knee down on that. Man, your knee is sore. I hope you have pants on. Uh, but I like this two-step. It's not comfortable. It's a pain to get on. But you got these two steps right here. And I also like that this is flexible. Now, it's not entirely flexible, but it moves. So that if you hit something, something hard, like a building, that will move. That will move, you know? Not much, but it will move. It's, you know, it's steel. DEF tank right here. DEF tank. This is a long video. I'm already at 20 something minutes. But there's a lot to go over with this truck. Radio, antenna. I don't really use the radio. I'm not a radio. I use Apple Music. So the front. Right there. Headboard, pretty decent. Sturdy, strong diamond plate. And it's solid, you know? Yeah. I like the dualies too. I really like dualies. Killer. Things are awesome in the snow. Uh, but yeah, these trucks, this truck wouldn't surprise me if I was able to take this thing a million miles. It really wouldn't. These trucks are built for it. Yeah, they're international, so they rev low. But, you know, I mean, they're not the sharpest. They're pretty ugly. I actually kind of hate the way these trucks look. I like Peterbilt. Long noses in the front. I like those trucks. Those trucks are sweet looking. These, yeah, these look uh, ugly to me. I don't, I don't like them. Pretty ugly. But, that's the international. 28 foot long bed, roughly, roughly, that's not exact, roughly. It's like 27 feet, it's at around 27, 28. But yeah, let me know what you think. Um, just comfort wise, the Ford beats this truck by far for comfort wise, for a purpose. This truck can carry a hell of a lot more than that Ford. Um, and they're about the same on gas mileage. So, it's really, you know, if you can fit everything on the Ford 550, fantastic. If not, you pull this bad boy out. But yeah, let me know what you think. The International. Thanks. Bye.